Welcome everyone and thank you for attending today's webcast, Data Management for Steel and Primary Metal Production. Our presenter today is Matt Lang. He's the Director of Consulting Services with Hagerman & Company. Before we get started, I'll let you know that you're in listening only mode. If you have questions during the presentation, you can type those into the question panel on the right-hand side of your screen and they'll be addressed at the end of the presentation. As we close down the session today, you'll be prompted to fill out a survey, and we ask that you take a few moments to fill that out. Additionally, all registrants will receive a follow-up email containing a link for the recording of this presentation. With that, I will hand things over to Matt. Thank you, Ashley, and good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Appreciate you joining us here today. As Ashley mentioned, our topic this morning is data management for steel and primary metals. And just a quick overview of our agenda. I'm uh, going to do just a very quick overview of our company, overview of the different systems we offer, then talk about some of the key business drivers that we're hearing back from our customers in the steel and primary metals industries, and then discuss some of the key features and capabilities that are needed in those industries and the capabilities that we offer. And we'll take a little um, look at some snippets of demonstrations anyway to give you a, a feel or taste of the systems. A little bit, excuse me, I've got a little bit of a cough here today, so I may need to mute my phone here every so often. Uh, but uh, we've been in business over 33 years now, and so we have offices spread throughout the United States, and we really cover uh, the whole U.S. and also do projects Canada, Mexico, and beyond on to other continents as well. And we've been doing data management projects for 22 plus years, and in that time we've actually done over 1,200 customer projects, and we have provided data management services uh, for three of the four largest U.S. steel producers. So we are uh, very experienced in your industry. One of the key things we offer is that we represent multiple different systems. So we don't just have one product that we try to sell to everyone. We have three different lines when it comes to data and document management. Uh, the Autodesk data management products with their uh, vault products, Blue Cello Meridian, and Synergist Adept. So we try to work with each particular client to help them determine the right product for their needs rather than just having a single product that we try to sell to everyone. And one thing about this presentation, uh, what we probably don't want people to do is use this presentation necessarily as a basis to decide Decide which product is right for them because we probably won't be going into enough depth here uh, to really help you determine that. So this is more just kind of an overview of needs and capabilities offered in general and by Hagerman for data management for steel and primary metals. Uh, if you have a further interest, then we can always dig deeper with you to figure out which product is going to be the best fit. And in terms of what you see this morning, it may focus a little bit more on Vault and Meridian just to try to keep things simple and avoid too much confusion. But uh, Synergist Adept is an excellent product as well. So, you know, anyone considering a system uh, should keep it on their, their list as well. <clears throat> now, our company, in terms of our data management, we've really uh, divided things up a bit. Myself, I focus on the plant data management. Uh, we have another lead consultant on our data management for product design and discrete manufacturing. So the needs you see outlined here are ones that we've really highlighted as key needs in plant data management, and whereas in discrete manufacturing and product design, things may be a little bit different. Uh, so the, the key needs that we see is kind of starting at a, a base level is just general document management. Uh, be able to manage any type of file, whether it's a CAD drawing, a Word document, a photograph, a scanned image, PDF, uh, provide basic functionality, check in, check out, revision history, searching, 
those kinds of things. And then, you know, since there are, there's always engineering groups uh, within these plants, you're going to need to manage and integrate with CAD files, not just uh, general or generic documents. And a lot of systems do well on generic documents, but don't do well on CAD. Another biggie is support for engineering projects so that your existing as-built or masters can be left alone for your operations and maintenance people to have access to. Then any drawings out for change can be assigned as project copies in separate project folders. They maintain their links to the as built but they may be out for change one to two years, then come back and be released as new as built uh, Also, you know, easy 24-7 search view print interface so that 2 o'clock Sunday morning, the maintenance guy can find the drawing he needs to get the repair done and keep the plant operating safely. Collaborating with outside parties. Most of the uh, big plants we work with, a lot of their engineering is done by outside engineering firms or have contractors doing a lot of construction work or people supplying equipment drawings. So strong ability to send files out to be changed or for construction, you know, have records of those transmittals going out. Uh, when you receive packages of documents back in, be able to log those and easily import and catalog them into the system, or to also share files via cloud-based collaboration if desired. And then the final key need that we generally see and highlight is the ability to link documents to assets. So if somebody needs to repair a piece of equipment, they can do their search to find that piece of equipment because that's what they're looking at. Maybe, you know, it's the equipment number, the tag number, then click a button and automatically see all the documents related to it and have the ability to have multiple documents related. I apologize. You haven't been seeing my screen, I don't believe. Um, Don, I apologize for that. Um, so hopefully my words were enough there. Uh, and then also have the ability to have um, the same document related to multiple pieces of equipment. Now, some of the typical challenges uh, that we've heard from customers is that um, what we find out, you know, currently a lot of times electronic documents are stored in locations and, structure, or in structures, you know, typically Windows folders that are difficult or impossible for users and other departments to access. So things are scattered around, kind of each department holds their own stuff, other people can't find it. Or you may have other data stored in Excel spreadsheets or access database files, again, spread over different departments and servers. People can't share. And then uh, difficult to understand the link between critical processes and related documents. So you're, you know, working with some process or piece of equipment, finding those documents, kind of the same thing with a piece of equipment. Also, a big reason people don't maybe share files as much as they should is that Windows-based network security doesn't give users and managers the ability to share the files, but keep them from un unintended access or editing. Where Adept, Meridian, and Vault, they have much more granular security, so you can control who can do what on a very granular basis to a file. Can they view it? Can they print it? Can they rename it? Can they delete it? Can they edit it? All controlled separately where Windows is either no access, read-only, or full access. Also going to uh, electronic search view and maybe print for operations and maintenance people, that really cuts the time needed for hard copy document distribution. We talked about the searching. I'm not going to hit hit all of these. Uh, so what we typically see, you know, people 
Other people want to create control document revisions and histories. We talked about separating the master and the working files. Also want to ensure people can not only find the document, it's in a totally controlled system, so they're always getting the most current and correct. So again, when maintenance is done, it's not being done off of an old file that's retrieved from a Windows folder or an old print pulled out of a toolbox. And I think I've kind of hit on some of these other, other items. So again, going back to controlling general documents, just basic features of all three systems. We talked about the security, check-in, check-out, revision history, integration with standard desktop application, managing all file types, searching, viewing, and redlining. All the systems we offer have viewing capabilities built in so you can view the files without having a native application. Also, workflow. So you can do electronic reviews and approvals of documents rather than having to send stuff out through email. Uh, so again, just to get a quick look here, I got way too much stuff open. If we look at Autodesk Vault, you know, we can kind of see just basic document controls. You can see files are organized here in folders and subfolders, just like Windows Explorer. So that's that's very comfortable. And if I go to documents, you can see we can have Word documents, PDFs, DWGs. If I go here to documentation, um, got a GP4 file. Uh, we can also have bitmap images. So again, controlling any, any type of file and then have the ability to, again, check in, check out, see revision histories, and so on. If we take a quick look at Meridian, I'm going to switch vaults here. You can see, again, Windows folder structure, different departments, different file types. Now, again, here's an Excel spreadsheet. You can see the viewing. You can see detailed information, right click, open it, print it, route it through a workflow for change, and so on. So then beyond general documents, which a lot of systems could do, even something like a Microsoft SharePoint, where things like that fall down, is integrating with CAD. Probably most people in the industry are using AutoCAD. Then, and you have things like integrating with title blocks, as we mentioned down here, uh, the ability to support linked XREF or hybrid files, support for AutoCAD-based verticals, Inventor, MicroStation, and SolidWorks, integration with CAD-based project files that they would have, and viewing CAD files, since this, all three systems we offer are focused on engineering and CAD, so they have integrated abilities to view CAD built in. And you can see CAD integration, I've been doing this a long time, it was maybe simpler back in the old days, it was just AutoCAD, manning, manage a DWG file, a lot of people could do that, but now the CAD applications are getting a lot more complicated. So it's even more important to have a CAD-oriented data management solution so you can really manage and track your CAD files properly. Another biggie here, and this is, this is a, a big one in the industry, is support for engineering projects. And I talked about this a little bit already, and you can kind of see Maybe I can explain graphically how this works. So we've got uh, some different projects going on, CP1, CP2, 3, and 4. So this is graphically showing the case where project 1 starts and a drawing or drawings are assigned to that project. So here along the baseline, that's kind of representing your masters or as built. So in this case, revision A gets assigned to project 1. 
it's being changed over here in this flow, going through engineering, as built, and then released back as revision B. And this is the thing we run into in a lot of plants. Sometimes you get concurrent engineering going on where the same drawing is actually assigned to multiple different engineering projects at the same time. So this same drawing, before it was released out of project one, actually got assigned to project two. So now this drawing is assigned to two projects, project one and project two. Then both Meridian and Autodesk Vault with our project connection from Hagerman and Company have the ability to separately assign drawings to project folders, actually take the same drawing and assign it to multiple projects at the same time, and then track all those relationships. Uh, so we know, hey, we got to get um, this new revision from this project down into project two, so that when it's done, it's got all the changes, so merge that together, you know, manage and track all of those links, and then auto, when the project or as build is done, automatically release the final project or as built copy back as the master. So if we take a look at that in Autodesk Fault, I'm just going to do this very quickly. We go into a little different vault that I have. And you can see how I've got this illustrated in my structure. I've got an as-built structure for as-built in my different areas of the plant. Then I've got a projects area where I've got my project copies. So if I go into project one, I've just got one file in there. Project two, I've got one file in there. And you can see here, uh, this is PRJ1 dash drawing one, and here we've got PRJ2 drawing one. So actually, we took drawing one, and it's been assigned to three different simultaneous projects. And if we go into our as-built area, look at drawing one, I can see, hey, we've got three active projects, and when it um, copies it automatically prefixes with the project number. And then if I, I can just right click and say go to folder and that would take me to the project one copy. And then here I can see its parents. So all those parent child relationships between the as built or masters and the project copies are managed and maintained. And all this is done through our Hagerman project connection because of our experience in the uh, steel, primary metals, and other plant environments, we've developed this where if you want to take a master and assign it to a project, that's our create linked copy. And then you pick a project folder to assign it to. And then your link copies, you go to, that's where you do your check-in, check-out changes. And then when your as-build is complete, you can do release as new parent revision. And then at that point, it would go back and automatically update, overwrite, and rev the as-built or master. So we've got a whole series of commands here that will allow you to manage and control as-built, project copies, keep the links, uh, do the updates, merge, and so on. Now, 24-7 search view print access, all the systems we handle have capabilities for that. Uh, to do forms-based searching or to browse the files, and then once you run a search, be able to click a file and bring it up for viewing. Autodesk Vault has their Vault web client, which is somewhat limited. The, the Vault web client doesn't allow you to do forms-based searching, which is a, a little limit, 
is actually very limited in a plant environment. So we have our Hagerman QVP connection, which allows forms-based searching for, for both Autodesk Vault and Blucello Meridian. And then Meridian and Adept also have their own search interfaces. Like you can see the Adept interface here. So if we do that, this is our Hagerman QVP connection. Again, it will work with Meridian or Adept, runs in a web browser, uh, very easy to use, very inexpensive. I'm connected to an Autodesk vault. And whatever properties you have in your vault you want to search on, and I'll go to a better plan example here in a bit, you can figure QVP. And then you can, I want to search in my category, engineering. Returns all the files. Um, so I only want to see ones that are work in progress. You can see it filters it down, or I can say only show me ones that are released. And if I say IAM, add that. So now it's only going to show me released IAMs where in a plant environment, you can have an interface where you could say, uh, search on the mill. You can probably get a ton of files. Then you can add mill sub area, equipment type, vendor, until you drill down to the file that you want. So if I run a search here, here's all my files. I don't have a, a lot here, but then I could say, I want to just look in, in fact, you can double, you can search here. I just want to search in mill area two, and that returns those particular files. And then our vendor, so then you can filter down so you get the file that you want. And I'll go back to all my files and then pick the file you want to view and bring it up into a viewer for that application. So the key is having this very nice forms based search view print interface for your plant and operation staff. Then collaborating with outside parties, uh, we talked about this a little bit, for creating document transmittals, importing incoming document packages, or then doing cloud-based collaboration. Some people just work with Dropbox. Autodesk has a couple of solutions uh, that can work with Vault. And then Blue Cello has their Meridian 360 cloud portal. So I thought we might take it a, a little, take a look at a little introductory. Well, I got a lot of stuff open here. Introductory video on it. This is very, very introductory and very high level, but I think it, it does a good job of talking about the hot buttons. Plan modifications are needed to ensure profitability and regulatory compliance. Increasing technological complexity requires specialists from all over the world to contribute to capital projects, expansions, overhauls, and change projects. Information exchange processes must be optimized to avoid uncontrolled document sharing, incomplete handovers, and project delays. Blue Cello Meridian 360 portal enables the entire supplier network to collaborate in the cloud without giving direct access to your internal network, master data, or workloads. Meridian 360 portal assures data consistency, completeness, and regulatory compliance while minimizing costs related to the handover of critical engineering content. Owner operators get plant modification projects delivered ahead of time, maximizing the profitability of their assets. Meridian 360 Portal. 
preparation in the cloud. All right, that was definitely a very high level introductory video. I'm going to show a couple of other things here. I've got a, this is back to Meridian, and I've got a kind of a prototype structure here. We got equipment files, and I, I only set up like HM for hot mill at this point, the different plant areas, hot mill, cold mill, and so on. An area involved for project files, organized by year and project number, vendor files that we can see here. Now, if you, for instance, receive packages of documents from outside vendors, if they should happen to provide you with a spreadsheet, something like this, where it's got the file names, be nice if they fill in additional properties or you can fill in properties yourself into a spreadsheet and see I'm doing a lot of copying and pasting here. What I'm going to do is point Meridian to this spreadsheet and it's going to go find these files, pull them into the system, fill in these properties and automatically put the files into the right folder. So if I go back to Meridian and say, document import tool. I got, got a configuration saved. And actually the way I did it, my column names in that spreadsheet happened to match the property names I set up. So it mapped everything automatically. And there's a whole lot of other settings and configuration you can do here. And say import. And now if I go to project files, it automatically pulled in all these files and filled in the properties. And these were brought in as project files from this vendor. Then our project is going to be completed. At that point, our project is complete. These, been, these have been validated. They're now ready to release as, as built. If I go to edit, set property value, and change my category to equipment files, and hit OK. that now seemingly magically took all those files and placed them into my as-built or equipment files where they needed to go automatically. So I changed my category from project file to equipment file, so it automatically released it to my equipment files, masters, or, or as-built. It's also possible here if we, you know, just bringing files in from vendors, I'll get one that's got a little bit more. Yeah. So select these files. I just drag them into a vendor folder. And you can see it automatically filled in the vendor information based on the folder that I signed to. Then, you know, I can fill out my other property information and would automatically catalog it where it needed to go in my as-built area. That's a feature of Meridian called field path relation, which does a lot of automating of putting the files in the right place, automatically naming them, automatically filling in properties for you, things like that. And then the last feature we had to talk about was linking of documents to related assets. And this is probably where the Meridian product is the, the strongest of the three, where the idea is 
you've got this document management or engineering data management system managing your drawings and other documents, but then you've also got equipment records or all the assets in your plant. Also probably work orders relating to those pieces of equipment. So here in engineering or possibly you know, a, a broader document management system, Across other departments, you're managing all these documents, and it's got the features you need for managing the files, CAD integration, that kind of stuff. Then over here, you've got a maintenance system, might be Maximo, might be SAP, plant maintenance, might be Oracle, a number of different systems that's managing equipment records, work orders, those kinds of things, with the idea being you're going to go to an asset or equipment record you want to see the document, or you might want to go to a document, see the pieces of equipment related to it. Well, the idea of the asset management module with Meridian is it links those two worlds together, so you can get to that information at a fingertip. So, for instance, this is just a sample screenshot from Blue Cello with Maximo, and be the similar with other maintenance management system. So here in the background is an equipment record in Maximo, and you can see all the equipment or asset information being tracked, its number, its description, its location, uh, its parent item, it's even got inventory costs, those kinds of things. But then also here is a button, and this button is part of the integration with Meridian that if anyone just clicks that button, it automatically brings up a window showing all the latest release documents relating to that piece of equipment. Or you can do this, you can actually do the same thing inside Meridian itself, go between assets and documents. Uh, there's also a shop for client available. Now, if we take a look at uh, just a couple of videos on this. In this video, we will be looking at how InnoCello can be used to manage engineering content in relation to your asset management system. Basic knowledge of the InnoCello Power User Client is recommended before viewing this tutorial. For this demonstration, we will be using an InnoCello Vault that has been configured with the InnoCello Asset Management Module. This module is used to connect engineering documents in the InnoCello Vault to objects and tags in your asset management system. The InnoCello Asset Management Module adds the following predefined folder structure to the InnoCello environment. As built to manage the functional plant structure, objects to manage all objects like control books, tags, equipment, pipes and lines, and projects for design, engineering and construction projects. To begin with, we will be working from the object level. The objects found in your vault correspond to the objects in your asset management system. If we select an object in the vault, we have a couple of property pages at our disposal. The first one is Object Details. The property page gives more information about the functional location and other details of the object we have currently selected. The next property page is the Where Used page. A key benefit of this page is the ability to manage the relationship between the object and the documents attached to the currently selected object. If we select one of the linked documents, there are a number of key features available to us. Let's have a look at each one. Go to Documents. Clicking this button will navigate away from the object we have selected and set the focus on the document. New full screen. This will launch a full screen viewer in which the document can be viewed. Report. Pressing this button will generate a simple Excel-based report of all documents attached to this object. And show viewer. This will show a smaller viewer window. If we now go into edit mode for this object, another button becomes available to us. 
The Add or Remove Documents button will bring up a new dialog with which you can add or remove document links for the subject. Using this dialog is very simple. The top half of the dialog shows you the documents that can be linked to the object. Usually this section will be empty as it is filled using search strings. The bottom half of the dialog shows the documents that are already linked to the object. In this instance, we enter the string AT in the document name field. We then make sure that the document type field is set to any and press the search button on the right. You will see that a whole list of documents has been generated from our search criteria. You can, of course, make the search criteria more detailed to reduce the number of returned results. Once you have found the documents you would like to link, simply select the documents in the top section of the dialog and press the Create Link button. Alternatively, you can break the link of a document and an object by selecting the desired documents in the bottom half of the dialog and pressing the Remove Link button. Now we will have a look at how you can work from the document point of view. I think I'll go ahead and pause or stop the video there as it's it's kind of the, the same thing in reverse. Uh, a couple of key takeaways from that, you know, going between the, uh, asset or equipment records and the documents, that was shown in the Meridian client. You know, someone who's using the maintenance system, they've got the same ability to get from an equipment record to documents, or there's a shop floor client for your maintenance people, so they can do the same thing. Also in that video, it was showing the interface to create the links between the equipment records and the documents. And there's a nice user interface for doing that. However, it is possible to have those links created automatically if there's some logical connection or data that exists in order to be able to do that. For instance, uh, text or block attributes could be read in drawings to uh, link the drawings to corresponding pieces of equipment, or if you have another database uh, that has matching equipment numbers and uh, drawing numbers, the links can be imported. Uh, so working with any customer, we can definitely look at ways to hopefully automate the creation of all those links. Uh, a couple of other key things, uh, looking for in a system for in the plan environment this i think different than um, discrete manufacturing or product design a uh, good ability to manage and work with scan drawings also because of the importance the importance of this type of thing in the plan environment a lot of customers we work with already have systems they're maybe old out of date don't work that well anymore so the ability to migrate all of those files, all of those revisions, the folder structure, the properties, the links between files, migrate and import those into a depth Meridian or Vault so nothing is lost. Uh, also taking out a block of drawing numbers for a project um, uh, and then sending those out to a consulting firm, that's a key feature we have a lot of people looking for, integrating with other in-house systems and databases, and support for other company departments. Uh, so, you know, not just get a system that's good for engineering and maintenance, but to make things easier on your IT and to enable people to work together better, have one system for data and document management that will cover all of your departments. So here's kind of a, a summary of key capabilities and tools. Uh, I, this doesn't list general document management, but that would be a yes for all of these. Then the other key things we talked about, the CAD integration, concurrent engineering or managing files for projects and separating those from the as-built, search view print, collaboration, and then linking of uh, documents and assets. So all the systems we handle have excellent CAD integration, so you know, it's important to check your specific CAD software and version uh, to make sure compatibility. Concurrent engineering, 
showed you just a touch of the Hagerman project connection for that. Then Blue Cello has their advanced project workflow capabilities. At this point with ADAPT, it's more of a manual process. All three systems are very good on search view print, uh, the collaboration options we talked about. And then Blue Cello is definitely the strongest on the linking of documents and assets. So that is what I had down to show and talk about this morning. I hope uh, this has been helpful. But, you know, again, we're kind of uh, just scratching the surface and anyone who's interested, we can definitely dive deeper on your particular needs. We do now have time for questions. Uh, one question is, are parts shared between project files automatically in Vault? Um, standard Vault doesn't really have, it, and if this is kind of relating to the concurrent engineering, uh, Standard Vault doesn't really have any capabilities for that. It's just uh, an in-place, check-in, check-out which does have its issues in the plan environment, um, you know, then we've got our project connection software where you can take the as build or master, assign it to multiple projects. And then if a file is modified in one project, it can be automatic, automatically, but through your control, have its contents updated in another project. So hopefully that answers the question. If if not, uh, might give it give me a little bit more clarification there in the in the question panel, or you know we could have a a more detailed offline conversation. Other questions. We can hold things open a minute or so. Um, while we're waiting to see if there's more questions, Ashley, do you have more wrap-up information? Um, it, I'll just let people know that if you have additional questions, you can just reply um, to the confirmation or reminder email you received from GoToWebinar, and we can get those to Matt to have your questions answered. Uh, once again, if you could take a few moments to answer the short survey, we would appreciate it. It will just automatically appear as we close down today. And I don't see any other questions, so I guess I will go ahead and conclude the broadcast. Thanks, Matt, for the presentation, and thanks, everyone, for attending today. Have a great day. All right. Thank you.